Coming to you live from our amazing reviewing studio cinema, like what they used to have on that Robert Malton American show, oh, where yeah. he pretended to sit in the cinema and review movies. It's this week's Apocalypse. I am your co-host, Kevin Lennon. With me, as always, is John Ferris. John, how are you doing today? We are definitely professional extremely professional they yeah. wouldn't let us record things if they weren't paying us <laughs> exactly yes uh, that, something that like that. <laughs> that, that that sounds all right yes. yeah they're, they're very strict with these things <laughs> yes so we're doing another uh we've, we're doing another one of these sort of uh review one film episodes <laughs> because we are turns out we're people with lives and things come up yeah <laughs> yeah yeah sure. i mean we, our lives mustn't be that busy because this has only happened this is the second time this it's is happened. the second time in 46 <laughs> weeks or 47 weeks now yeah i think, I think that's this has happened yeah i think that's quite a sad reflection of our lives yeah i mean if you look at like although there are only two of us i mean like yeah. i mean those them my brother my brother and me guys they have three people yeah, on their podcast and they can put yeah seems like a nightmare they can do things like put together best of episodes and stuff i wouldn't even know where to start <laughs> with that shit because it's all the best yeah yeah it? oh i was going to go the opposite direction and say, i know you yeah, are we don't have any best i know you were going to say that that's why i kept talking because i wanted <laughs> to stop you so what we're going to do is what we did was of course a bit of backstory i guess on how this happened mm -hmm. uh we had a topic uh, for next week's show and we watched the movies and I don't know maybe they were all great movies but maybe they weren't you'll have to listen and find out uh, <laughs> but what we did was we found a better fit for uh, the theme in yeah. another movie but we had already watched The Blur Witch Project and of course then John you had the great idea of hey let's just review The Blur Witch Project then yeah so we don't um, miss an episode because God knows what'll happen yeah, because if we don't upload on Monday, God knows. <laughs> they'll revoke our license. <laughs> I love, I'm painting this weird picture of like how podcasting is somehow <laughs> regulated like <laughs> yeah. or something. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's absolute bullshit. Uh, they let anybody do this shit. So um, we're just going to talk about, as, as people who went to see, now did we see this together? We yes we did we we went with a couple of friends to yeah to the the, the Belfast uh, premiere. Indeed, no less. Yeah. We, and uh, we came out of the cinema and <laughs> were absolute blankers because we, we kept were we, we were shouting very loudly. Can't believe the girl was the witch the whole time. Yeah, just to annoy people. And there, there was people rightfully going, "You wankers." Yeah, I feel bad about that now. <laughs> but what were we like? For fifteen, yeah, because <laughs> it's nineteen ninety nine that this came out. I and spo say. spoiler alert: well. She could be the witch. You never find out. Spoiler alert: We were being dicks and we yeah. were lying. And it, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so this is the Blair Witch Project, directed by uh, Daniel Merrick and Eduardo Sanchez. Now I don't know if Daniel Merrick would go on to do much. I've seen a few other Eduardo Sanchez movies. Yeah. Uh, he didn't really do much in the way of the. He had. He didn't really do a lot of f more stuff like this. Yeah. Uh, he did some other horror movies. He eventually did do. Uh, there was a big, a bit of a big deal made. I'm going to say a big deal. I, I heard about it before it came <laughs> out because I was listening to the. I was going to say the right people there, but just like yeah, I guess the right people to have heard about Eduardo Sanchez is going back to found footage movies. Oh. Uh, yeah, he did. He did a Bigfoot movie uh, called. I believe it was called Exists. Oh. Um, which I actually kind of enjoyed, but was a bit shite, but was kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, if you want, yeah, it is kind of fun. Exists is all right. It's very, very stupid. But um, you can see the influence again of this film in it, which for obvious reasons, it means the same director. But uh, this film is the one, like, when people talk about, and it is such a tired thing now. <laughs> But, like, the found footage horror film genre. Yeah. Uh, it got way out of control at some point. Like, that's something I was thinking about the whole way through watching this. Was I was expecting to go in and, like, see a lot of things that I would now think of as cliched. But to be honest, it, it, it it's I felt like I was kind of in the zone, the same zone, when we were talking about something like uh, Halloween. Yeah. And the slasher movie genre of, like... That's John. exactly what I thought as well. Yeah. This is like this is the found footage version of what Halloween is to the slasher 
yeah thing yeah yeah definitely and, yeah and in that context of course i mean that they made this film and it changed how people looked at this type of filmmaking mm-hmm. but a lot of the people who made the subsequent films missed the point <laughs> yes big and time grabbed onto the wrong things now there are a few other found footage horror movies i like uh i was trying to come up with sort of a, a list and then it turned out there wasn't that many uh so i do like the first paranormal activity is is not yes, bad yeah. I, li- and... I like whenever like one of my major problems with this and this kind of movie does suffer from it a bit but mm-hmm. is when you're just sitting watching it going why are they still filming this and, yeah or why are they filming to begin with like they do kind of point out they, they, they make like kind of th- there is like this weak kind of explanation in, in this that you can go along with where yeah. heather is just like really obsessed with like documenting everything and yeah they address it at least yeah they which... have a point where um is it josh is yeah. mucking around with the camera and then he says to her i get why you do this I understand yeah. why you've been filming the whole time because it doesn't seem real mm-hmm. when you're filming when you're looking at it through the camera. Yeah, so she can like divorce herself from it. And then they start getting really antagonistic towards her at that point. That's yeah. Uh, it's yeah, that's uh like it they work it into the story and, and I think that's yeah. that's one of the points you're making, like to you know where these films that followed because apparently that after this was released and was massive everyone was out in the woods with their ca- with their handheld cameras yeah. uh, so much so that apparently this disrupted the uh, like hunting um oh, areas because yeah. they were scaring the animals away and like too, um y- y- you expect this movie to kind of not make those uh efforts and like to be kind of like very early and like almost kind of a bit as you say like have all the cliches and like you're rolling your eyes going oh god's sake but mm. it, it does pretty well yeah it, you can see you can see what it does in when i think about other crappy found footage movies i've seen i can see how they've taken this as a template not just like the format yeah. but like the here we are like there's so many of them start with <laughs> Here we are in a car going somewhere and someone's (laughs) filming and talking to people. And it's like, it made sense in the Blur Witch Project because there were a bunch of filmmakers who had a bunch of equipment sitting around and it would make sense that she would whack on the camera and be jamming it in people's faces because she's obviously like a film student Mm -hmm. and is very excited about making this her first documentary film that she's making and she's like oh this is the sound guy we've never met before look at him hello hello this is my mate who's the camera guy and you you know and like doing all this dumb shit and they are annoyed with her that she's doing it yeah but they kind of go along with it but the the annoyance with her doing it starts almost from the beginning especially mike the sound guy he he's just like i don't want anything to do with this yeah yeah he's 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 my favorite character (laughs) actually he's the most sort of like oh i could see somebody after so many days in the woods being behaving exactly like this yeah being angry and antagonistic and grumpy and just generally fucked off with yep. everybody he's already put, been put in a bad twist or bad form because she's filming them in, like there, there's that scene yeah. in the, the hotel where he's just like why are you always doing that just like yeah. go away go away yeah. and like it's, leave me alone yeah they see that in his character really early so that it makes sense later when he does the shit he does because he's like really just he's got this building up sort of hatred yeah for her for heather and like i, I have to say like the performances are very good in this and they sell it because one of the most I, I think one of the 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 biggest successes successes with this movie is how they marketed it and everything kind of around it because yeah. they they really kind of pitched this whole thing as this happened like it, this is found footage mm. in the sense that at the, like when we seen this first time we were kind of clued in a bit because we were reading up on it and we were yeah. we were always kind of film nerds like uh our our group of friends but a lot of people were going in thinking this is an actual found footage movie yeah like these people are real and this all happened and 
that's amazing and they really i read somewhere there um when i was reading up on it that it was one of the first movies to really utilize the internet for its yep. campaign and mm-hmm. like that's kind of weird to say now because everyone uses it <laughs> everyone yeah trying, like, i mean i remember before going to see this going onto their website and watching a documentary that they had made yes yeah about finding the footage and the people who were trying to clean it up mm-hmm. and all this stuff and like people like like it was supposed to be about the filmmakers i think i don't know if it was eduardo sanchez and david Merrick in it yeah i don't remember because i watched it in 1999 <laughs> but i remember it them it was them talking about we are we made this film from this stuff we found and here's talking about the police reports yeah. and all that stuff and like really delving into all the the rust and par stuff which actually was an afterthought in the production, the yeah. whole the stuff about the killer. They filmed m- almost all of the sort of out in the woods stuff and had a finished movie. Yeah. And then took it to studio who were like, we will make this cool, but you need some more stuff at the front. Uh, yeah. I think it was one of those like, oh, the test audiences aren't going to understand why. <laughs> uh. So then they went out and just did a bunch of those candid sort of interviews with the people in the town. Yeah. talking about like the local legends and stuff like that that was all filmed last i also read somewhere do you know the the woman that's holding the baby yeah. um because a lot of that stuff is all just like they're ad-libbing like so much of this yeah. movie is ad-libbing like they kind of set the scene and wanted to see how the actors played it out and, and things like that mm. but that whole story that she goes off on like this tangent like telling the tale that she was told yeah. That's all made up. She just came up with that on the spot. I hope she got a fucking writing credit. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's th- like the heart of the fucking movie. Yeah. It, uh, eventually, they tried to look. I think it's this one woman anyway. They tried to look for, her, but um, to give her a credit. But even the name that's like credited isn't hers because they couldn't weird. find her or something. So she like just appeared and went here. Here's your movie, and then left, and that was it. I don't know if this. <laughs> It, I mean, it could be like a, another urban legend thing that I've, uh, I've just I read somewhere, and it's only half true. But uh, yeah, I thought, it's I thought hard that was to know. Kinda, yeah, it's hard to know with this movie in particular what's real and what's made up. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's 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 such a a huge thing now. I mean, it did go on to spawn actually some great films, mm-hmm. like uh, a film we talk about, Wreck, yes, uh, the yeah. Spanish zombie extravaganza yeah. that is just. Like I think I remember. I think we said at the time it's probably the best one of those films. Yeah, I de- um, I definitely prefer yeah. Wreck to yeah. this as, as a movie, but you know you you can't. There there is like a legacy thing that this yeah. kind of gets. I, I I think you know that it did kind of make the framework. Like there was already found mm-hmm. footage movies before this, Aye. but it's very much like we like we said, like that Halloween thing where it kind of did it so well. And did it yeah. so right that people were like, "Oh, wait, anyone can make this." And I was like, "Yeah, no, no, you yeah. still need to know what you're doing. You still need talent, yeah. and you still need." Yeah, anyone There's... can <laughs> get the equipment yes, to make exactly. this. Is more what I think jumped into people's heads, and they thought, "Ah, sure, we'll just go out in the woods and fuck about, and yeah. then we'll boom, bam, boom, million dollars." <laughs> And that yeah, they like they. I think this is on record as one of the highest grossing movies from like budget to what it got because it it yeah it was ten thousand so dollars or something yeah. I think total <laughs> it cost them and they made fucking millions yeah. out of it and it's so yeah. satisfying that it came out I think around the same week as the remake of the haunting which is like a horror movie <laughs> that had this like star power of like you know it, it had uh, Catherine Zeta Jones Liam, Liam Neeson, Neeson yeah. Um, uh, Owen Wilson, who I don't think was a big deal at the yeah. time, maybe he'd been in like Bottle Rocket, he'd been in like and a like, Wes Anderson movie. Like even two, saying Catherine, point. Catherine Zeta Jones and Liam Neeson. Well, maybe uh, not so much Liam Neeson now, I don't know, but saying those names now, people are going, "Oh yeah, that sounds like real star power." But at the time, <laughs> they were like Catherine Zeta yeah. Jones kind of mattered back then. <laughs> yeah, she had just exploded into like Hollywood and stuff at that point. She did Sorrow, where yeah. she's like showed her thigh, and everyone was like, "Oh." Yeah, I remember her from the Darling Buds of May, yeah. mainly with David Jason. That was a good show. Yeah, so did I. Yeah, um, from humble beginnings, damn it. Yeah, but um, you know, the the Blur Witch 
project completely destroyed that in the box oh, yeah. office. And not surprised. It's fucking yeah, shit. Like, not only is it shit, but like it kind of showed that I think people were sick of these kind of real boring, like mediocre horror movies that they were just like just shit night and yeah. this kind of shook it up a bit and okay now I, you know fine footage movies are a dime a dozen but yep. we, we need like another we need another <laughs> thing like we need another Blur Witch Project or Halloween yeah. at this yeah, point it, to shake yeah, things up it's, it's, it's this thing that happens in horror a lot in every sort of medium that horror exists mm-hmm. in uh, you see this a lot with horror video games where you'll get someone will come up with one really really cool idea yeah and then every single horror game that comes out for the next five years will do that thing. <laughs> like, um, there was a, a little, a tiny wee game called Slender uh, the Eight Pages. Yes. That was basically about uh, Slenderman, which everybody knows about friggin' Slenderman. But <laughs> th- there was all predicated around you were running around in the woods and you couldn't see very far in front of you. And you had to find eight pages. And basically, wherever you weren't looking... Mm-hmm. sometimes the slender man would appear and it was sort of predicated around the if you looked at him that was what hurt you yeah so you would turn around and say you're like shit and then you'd start losing your sanity or your health or whatever and you'd have to run away and that was really like i remember downloading it, it was free somebody just put it out like i made this silly thing and it was so goddamn intense <laughs> i remember sitting in the dark and playing it and being like, this is amazing. And then they came out with, uh, there was a game called Amnesia yes. that took that idea and just really refined and refined it down to a needle point. And that should have been it. <laughs> but then everybody, We're every like, them. <laughs> yeah, every every indie horror game that came out for like the next five years was that, don't look at the monster. And it was always like, they were all so cheap. They were just getting hammered out. Uh, same thing with like there's a game called Outlast it's all about like you know go hide in the cupboard basically is the idea <laughs> which was fun when it was happening in that game but then every single other one took the same idea yep. of oh I uh, gotta run and find a good place to hide da, 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 da. and then that got refined down by Alien Isolation and it was brilliant <laughs> and then it was like right okay and then people tried to do that again and it got done to death so it's the same shit it's like <laughs> we need like we- a judge who like goes no 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 that's the one that's that's you've perfected yeah. it no one's allowed to make any more of these yeah you have to have at least an extra good idea to go along with that <laughs> thing or you don't get to make your movie smell yeah. vision yeah because the cool thing about like like the first paranormal activity did a good job with like it was a good slow burn yeah. on it yeah uh that was what was good about paranormal activity now blair which is a slow burn as well you know it's sort of oh, like very much it's so. an escalation of tension mostly between the characters but then they have this external force that is fucking with them while their internal dynamic falls apart yeah and paranormal activity took that and put it in a marriage and introduced a demon into a house you know a very small location in paranormal activity yeah now there's always in all of the paranormal activities there's always a really tenuous reason why there's fucking cameras everywhere (laughs) that they do the best way of explaining it in the first one because he's like an editor and a filmmaker and his wife is basically having night terrors yeah. and is getting up and sleepwalking and he wants to see what she's doing and they want to keep an eye on it basically and like they also think that maybe someone's breaking into the house and messing with him mm-hmm. so they explain it like that every subsequent sequel does not have even nearly an explanation <laughs> they're just like oh yeah we've got cameras all over the house why because the shut burglars up. i guess uh, <laughs> shut up it's the movie <laughs> and they're all garbage and they're all boring like paranormal activity 2 is one of the most boring films i have ever seen it is so dull there is a period of about six minutes in that film where a camera just pans back and forth over a kitchen and nothing happens and then it just cuts <laughs> to something else i think they, they try to like see it later so that oh, later on the film you're like oh something is going to appear in the kitchen but then you're like, i don't care yeah. I don't care. You it's already a, cashed The your laziest chips. way to, to pad out your movie. <laughs> yeah, it's like, let's just... It's literally just B-roll the movie. Actually, <laughs> it's just, here's a bunch of footage we got. Let's just fill out this section with the random footage. And then later we'll have a door open. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Like, 
And Blair Witch doesn't even do that, and it's does it, it it's way better. There's no like, oh my god, did you see that door open? They don't do that in the Blair Witch Project. It sounds in the distance. There was a meant to be. Uh, there, there, there's a moment where they all get spooked in the tent. That's that's mm-hmm. basically the movie. Um, yeah. And they all start <laughs> running out of the tent. Right. And the cameraman was meant to pan over briefly, and mm-hmm. you see like a figure in white, right. the Blair Witch. Um, but he forgot, and I, th- I think <laughs> <laughs> I think because the budget was so low, they couldn't do it again. So they just had to go. Right, well, guess we don't have a Blur Witch then. Yeah, because she starts shouting, "What the fuck is that?" Yeah. At that point, yeah, I guess that was. I think that's way more effective. Yeah, exactly. It, it might have maybe you know, it could have been a decision of just like, well, that works better. That you, uh, you, you know, what you don't know or what you don't see is kind of more frightening. But uh, yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, this movie, it, it has, for me anyway, it has, a, like, the middle part of it kind of drags a bit and stuff. But even yeah. that kind of, it all plays into this whole feeling of it feeling real. Yeah. You know, all this recorded footage, it's, like, it's not meant to be this, like, exciting, like, oh, my God. Like, there are moments yeah. where you're just, like, going, right, okay, we'll get it. You're lost in the woods, for fuck's sake. Like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting scenario, which is why all that's in there. Whereas there's something like paranormal activity 2 there's no reason for someone to cut in all of the footage of panning back and forth over the kitchen for where nothing happened yeah whereas like this is like in the blur witch project it's supposed to be this is all the footage we found yeah this is everything and we've tried to put it together as best we can to make sense of what happened to these people and that's why all that makes sense Mm -hmm. and you do get character stuff from them the whole time as well which makes that useful for a narrative yeah you know you do see the the dissolving of trust and uh people becoming more frustrated which justifies what things that happen later Mm -hmm. um and it all kind of it all kind of works uh which is again people took the wrong lessons (laughs) from that they're like, it was necessary for that story to do that. It's not necessary for your paranormal... Again, I'm reeling on paranormal <laughs> You activity, really are, yeah. The- but it's such a lazy I'm passion. not missing the opportunity to get stuck in the paranormal too here. Yeah, it's such a lazy cash grab. Like, it's so <laughs> shameless. There's so All many of, of them, sequels. though. There are so many. There's like, they, they dropped the numbers at one point and just started putting in subtitles. There's one that's just called Paranormal Activity The Ghost Dimension. Oh, God. Uh, which is very bad. I think it's better than two, though, <laughs> but that's not hard. Uh, now, there was a sequel to The Blair Witch Project, but it's not. It's kind of a fake sequel. It's not real. It's one of those ones where it was a film that was already in production, oh, and The Blair Witch ones. Project. Yeah, it was a dumb horror movie about some teens and murdering each other somewhere in the middle in a a, a fucking build outbuilding somewhere. And what, as, as far as I know, what happened was it was already in production, and they were like, "Fuck, Blair Witch Project's really popular." Yeah. Uh, sequel. Some executive sequel, yes. just went, "I know exactly what to do here." IP. Yeah. Yeah, and they were like, let's slap the Blur Witch name on this, shoot a couple of extra scenes to put the words Blur Witch into it. <laughs> and this was called, I think it was just called, it's called Blur Witch, the Blur Witch Project Book of Shadows. I think the film was just called The Book of Shadows. Uh... And they stuck Blur Witch on the front, and then they made it vaguely about it being found in the Burkittsville woods or something. And then that's it. Oh and my god, it's, just... it's the Blur Witch. Exactly, it's like <laughs> the Denver Broncos. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry, just I feel safe making Simpsons reference because I know everybody's gonna get this. Yeah, but yeah, I mean it's just, and then they made they made another one just called Blair Witch, mm. uh, which was not complete garbage. Oh, okay. Uh, it was all right. It did some fun stuff. It took the idea of being mazed. Which is what happens in the Blair Witch. They're being ma- like, if you know anything about uh, witchcraft lore and stuff like that, mm-hmm. what's happening to them in the Blair Witch Project is that the witch is mazing them, i.e., like confusing their directions and having them loop around on themselves and end up at the same point over and over again. They do some fun stuff with that in in the Blair Witch, which is a terrible title. They should have just <laughs> called it the Blair Witch Project Two or something like that. Uh, it's but again, it suffers from all the other fucking problems that a lot of found footage things do like the the tenuous reasons for them still to be filming yeah you know like uh i mean the worst defender for that in my opinion was probably 
uh, the what did you call those movies? There's a whole bunch of them now. Uh, Cloverfield. Oh yeah, oh, the that's... first Cloverfield is the worst offender for why did this person? There's one point where someone goes back for the camera. Yeah. In Cloverfield, uh, you know, like that's the point in that movie where now I have enjoyed J.J. Abrams movies. Yeah. I quite like um, Super Eight. Is it? This is maybe outside his wheelhouse, though. He's <laughs> like maybe yeah. uh, maybe found footage isn't for J.J. Yeah, and it was just like there's a point where somebody they they get attacked by all these mon- little smaller monsters, and that someone drops the camera. Yeah. And then the camera's lying there on the ground. And then you hear bop, 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 footsteps. And someone comes back and picks it up, and you're like, oh, "Okay, you lost me. You lost me with your your premise. Like, don't have them drop. You just had them drop the camera because you've seen that in other found footage movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had to have somebody go back. No one would in a right mind. There's a point where they're in a building that is leaning over and about to fall, <laughs> and they're like shimmying along outside bits of buildings and stuff like an Uncharted game. And the guy's still holding the camera. He still has one hand disabled when he's shimmying on the outside of a building yeah and he's holding a camera still like you would drop that thing right away and say fuck this thing i need both (laughs) my hands but anyway yeah everyone missed the point i think the blur witch project it held up surprisingly well yeah for me i I think i was shocked by how much i was still like i'm still kind of into this yeah yeah i i'm kind of i'm still completely burnt out with uh with found footage movies, but Ugh. I kind of appreciate that. Like, you no, know, I appreciate this one. And there's ones like Wreck, and as you mentioned, uh, Paranormal Activity One. One exclusively. Yep. Yes. Uh, which I kind of, I don't know, I can watch them all right. And uh, like, see, as soon as I hear a new movie is found footage, it's just like, no, <laughs> no, I'm done. Yeah. But I, I can appreciate this one, especially like, there's a lot of behind the scenes things in, in uh, this movie that I find fascinating and very interesting of like how they went about it where the they were kind of lost in the woods so to speak mm. the three actors and the directors would like give them notes like would would crawl into the camp at night and leave them notes to be like this is what's happening you know mike you're gonna you know throw the map away and stuff like this and they're going right and then it was all improv how how they reacted only a few scenes apparently there was meant to be a romantic kind of involvement between heather and josh the Ugh. the cameraman and mm-hmm. and then, but they scrapped it because the actors really did not like each other Ooh. and a lot of footage had to be scrapped because those two were meant to be friends and meant to get on at the start but yeah. they just like were sniping and bickering at each other so much that they were like shit we can't use any of this so yeah. they end up scrapping out which is very very good which is a godsend mm. maybe yeah because that would have been ridiculous there's nothing i hate more than an yep. unnecessary romantic subplot exactly they're the most they're the worst crutch for a writer yeah i think just oh let's create drama here by having these people fall in love <laughs> or lust oh. or whatever's more convenient now we yeah, care it's... about them yeah, it's such a crutch, and <laughs> I never approve of it. Because who can have empathy for someone that's single? Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, single people, they're worthless. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> doesn't matter if they die. You have no loved ones to speak of, clearly. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> fuck that shit. Yeah, so all in all, John, would you say you still enjoyed it this time around then, or what? Yeah. Yeah, like more more on a technical level, I think. You know, it, okay. It's not doesn't really scare me it doesn't kind of mm. you know it's not one of those ones where like i i feel the tension too much um but maybe that is because i'm coming coming from from a more technical aspect and like kind of yeah. looking at it like that but uh i don't know I, I would still recommend it to anyone kind of interested Aye. in those kind of movies or horror movies in general you know i think it's kind of like it's one of those ones that even if you don't like it it's like a must see just yeah. give it a go and it did it changed cinema for a while there for yeah or it did. maybe for a long time actually maybe forever yeah i mean they still crank those out for you better or worse up. yeah you see the odd ones show up on netflix now and then and i go mm-hmm. oh i guess i'll watch this 
because I'm an idiot. Yeah. And then I get 10 minutes in. And, no, if, usually I get 40 seconds in and they have a scene in a goddamn car where someone's sitting in the front seat with a camera filming people and talking at them. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, right. They're just doing this. This again. is going to be the best trip ever. Yeah. yeah. None of us are going to die. Yay. We're definitely going to be fine. <laughs> uh although there was one uh there's no I, I just keep thinking of random ones that are all right there's one called lake mungo that i remember being for an australian one surprisingly it's called light mango light mango yeah that is we it's about it's all like supposed to be like footage recovered from this girl's phone <laughs> you hear that and you're like ugh. but it's actually i remember it being pretty damn good uh but i liked it this time i i did a whole like draw the blinds turn off the lights and like settle in Ooh. kind of thing and i was just like yeah i am to-. and like i think that really still has sort of an atmosphere about it. Yeah, definitely. That I like. Yeah, yeah, it does the atmosphere. Well, I wasn't necessarily scared. Yeah. Uh, but I was just like, yeah, I like this sort of lost in the woods kind of thing. And it's very autumnal, mm-hmm. you know, and the weather's shitty and everyone's miserable. I like, everyone seems genuinely miserable. <laughs> yeah. And As I you like mentioned, that. like, Mike is, like, Mike, I think, not so much the the audience surrogate, but definitely, you know, yeah. for us, I think he was the one that we <laughs> identified with most because you'd just be sitting there going, why the fuck did you drag me out to these fucking woods, you batshit yeah, crazy you maniac? keep looking at this map, but yet we've gone round in a circle three times and yeah. you don't know how to read <laughs> yeah. the fucking map, do you? No, you don't, you liar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I, I, I think it's a testament to how well the actors do that it yeah. does feel real. Like, the, so much of this movie require like we, we keep saying that as well like you know it requires that atmosphere to be right and yeah. for it to feel real and it wouldn't have been s- such a success if it hadn't worked mm-hmm. like that because that was the whole thing you know if you had yeah. if, if the audience had seen the seams they would have went all oh, right no this is bullshit then that was just a marketing yeah. ploy but a lot yeah. of people were surprised when they found that out. And yeah, you could almost get to the end and still be like, "Wow, that's not so that really happened." Yeah. I, I do. I, the the one thing that I I do think is a bit shitty with the marketing was I remember they uh, do do you remember they kept like saying like people throwing up in the cinema and blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah, I hate that. Like because they were they were trying to like paint it as they were so scared they were throwing up, but it's yeah. just there's there's a problem. There's a major problem with found footage movies for a lot of people, and that's. Yep motion sickness yep so people were throwing up because they had bad motion sickness yeah but they're like oh they're so scary (laughs) yeah this movie in particular the camera is swinging about yeah all over the joint now there's there's ones that again wrong lessons taken from this movie (laughs) and for the ones where other found footage movies would do that just to do it yeah and it would be just irritating as hell (laughs) but yeah uh any marketing campaign where they show like night vision camera showing the audience in a cinema i'm immediately just like fuck off (laughs) i'm not falling for that it has never been true i have never gone to one of those movies and been like oh my god i'm so shocked it has never happened it's to me it tells me i think maybe your movie might be shite yeah because you're trying really hard in a cheap way as well in a cheap way you get your test audience that you can do anyway and you just go let's set up a night vision camera at the front we'll just use that for the trailer okay okay <laughs> fuck off anyway right but i'm gonna say like if i had to give this a movie a star rating Ooh. like oh, uh, i've go never the done roger, that before have i i know they go like the roger ebert scale of like which annoyingly roger ebert always used four stars scale it's always baffled my <laughs> pickled my fucking brain three out of four i'd say a three out of four film yeah 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 that's, yeah, that's fair enough I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around because yeah like five. sorry i've never done this to you before <laughs> and i'm suddenly I mean, asking you to come up with a scaling system this is why i hate scaling systems because it's just like what what what's the difference between I suppose like one is going to be absolute garbage fire the, the bride yeah essentially yeah or the blair witch project too or the bride <laughs> yeah. yes yeah um, the bride is like the, if now does our scale include a zero are we allowed to have zero see, no, I the think bride? You, have, you have to have something mm. and you can't have halves or else what's the point in doing uh, like if you're if you're going to do like four stars out of ten or uh, 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 i just broke four. my own brain four stars yeah. out of four to you know then how you can't do half so you can't have like That's a three a and a half point scale yeah, then isn't you know, it exactly yeah. so uh yeah three 
Three out of four. Out of Could four. we agree in my arbitrary <laughs> scale that I just came up with and foisted upon you? Blair Witch Project, three out of four. Good effort, lads. Change the face of horror cinema. Maybe for the worse, but Rex really good. Anyway, so we are on Twitter. We are at 7 Day Apocalypse. That is at numeral 7 Day Apocalypse. You can email us filmcast at thisweeksapocalypse.com. It's filmcast at thisweeksapocalypse.com. John, I'm so sorry. What's that? What's that? I'm so startled. Uh oh. Move the camera, Shelly. Move the camera, Shelly. <laughs>